out of luck. I want to go back to the Epstein case here for a quick second. I want to welcome into the show Deborah Blum. She is a, uh, a, a trial-winning attorney, a great litigator, and somebody who uh, I want to welcome to the program. Uh, Deborah, thank you so much for making time for us today. Uh, looking at this Epstein case as it's playing out uh, there in the Southern District of New York, your reaction to seeing this thing resurrected and now this prosecution taking place, what do you make of the current uh, state of this case? Well, there was a non-prosecution agreement in the state of Florida between the U.S. government and Epstein's Epstein and his lawyers that said they're not going to prosecute him for crimes that occurred in Florida during this time period since they entered into the agreement with the U.S. government where he was allowed to plead a state deal as opposed to having a federal case. I think that the whole thing should be thrown out because he entered into a deal with the U.S. government that covered this time period that were for the same or similar acts. So I think that this prosecution should be barred. Right now, in his indictment, he is charged with sex acts that occurred in the state of Florida. That absolutely should be thrown out, and that absolutely should not be allowed, because that has already been dealt with. And this, these alleged acts occurred between 2002 and 2005. That's really remote in time. Let me get your reaction to this. As, as a litigator, as somebody who represents clients in, in courts, um, are, are, are you growing more concerned as you're starting to see these second bites at apples where we, we have something adjudicated at the federal level, so now we go after him at the state level, or we have something adjudicated at the state level, now we go to the federal level? We've certainly seen things like Paul Manafort and, 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 and Mike Flynn and stuff like that, uh, and now this with Epstein. That's got to kind of make you go a little bananas as a litigator because now you don't know where, where the arrows are going to come from next when it comes to your client. I absolutely agree with you. You know, what Epstein is accused of is heinous. No one is saying, good for you. This is a good job yeah. if this is true. You know, there are a lot of, uh, there will be evidence in this case. They did find pictures of most likely underage girls in a safe and is a Manhattan apartment. So I do think that they have something here. However, a deal is a deal. And if you enter into one, it's supposed to be binding on both sides. And right now in the Me Too era, I think that the government, the state prosecutor's offices are ignoring a lot of glaring evidence. For example, in the Weinstein matter, I don't know that they should have prosecuted on this exact matter that they're going forward on. He was had a, a full relationship with the woman that is the complainant in the matter that fully mitigates the alleged sexual acts. In this instance, there was a deal, and now the government seems to be going against that deal. You know, it's the state, the government of the United States. So he made a deal, and that should yep. stop yep. this prosecution. It's, and look, it's not lost on me. You, you look simply at what happened with this Kevin Spacey case up in, uh, up, up in uh, Cape Cod, and, and you see the allegations against him. It blew up an entire uh, entertainment franchise, and it basically uh, sidelined his entire career. Suddenly, the complaining witness uh, asserts the fifth at, uh, at trial. I mean, this, it, sometimes, sometimes people are innocent, and they're just getting blown up because they're famous. Right. And then, you know, unfortunately, there are collateral consequences to that. We saw that with Louis C.K., Aziz Ansari. Their shows were canceled. And beyond them, there are the makeup people. There's the film crew. There's a whole team of people that lose out on their jobs based on accusations. You know, I do think that there are issues we have in this country. There are problems that women face. Women do have terrible sure. sex crimes committed yeah. against them. But sometimes when it's a famous person, people are willing to make things up. I'm not saying that that's the case with Epstein. The issue with Epstein is the fact sure. that these were adjudicated. Sure. And also, they're so distant in time at this right. point that I don't see how the government is going to be able to prove their case. You know, there are going to be uncertainties caused by yeah. the distance in time. Yeah, no doubt Cyrus Vance has some tough questions he's going to have to answer as well. Uh, we'll see if anybody has the uh, courage to, uh, to go up to him and ask him those very difficult questions. Uh, Deborah Bloom, we appreciate you so much, and I look forward to visiting with you again on this story and on a number of others as well. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. All the best. That's Deborah Blum checking in, uh, giving you your thoughts on this. Look, one of the one of the most sacred values we have typically had in our 
judicial system is this idea of double jeopardy, right? You, you stand trial, you're acquitted. Now all of a sudden, boom, we're going to charge you over here instead. That's a new era here in America, folks. Epstein's a scoundrel and a sex offender, admittedly. But where do we go from here? We'll talk about it. Brett Witterbull Show, Newsmax TV, back after this. hit Newsmax first in the morning. Oh, great. First in the morning. Fastest oh, well. rundown of the news. Important people go to Newsmax. Watch Newsmax TV. Plus, get breaking news from Newsmax.com. We're real news for real people. Hello, I'm Danny Thomas. Many years ago, I made a fantastic promise to build a shrine. And the shrine is going to be a hospital for children of all races and creeds and free. And my father fulfilled his promise and opened St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. He believed that no child should die in the dawn of life. When St. Jude opened in 1962, the overall childhood cancer survival rate was just 20%. Today, the survival rate is 80%. But still, one in five children diagnosed with cancer in the U.S. will not survive. The worst words you could ever hear is your child has cancer. I was afraid, I was scared. You just hope that it's wrong, like it has to be. Cancer doesn't care who you are, or where you're from, or how old you are. Children are fighting a battle they should never have to face. Together, let's end childhood cancer. Go online or call this number right now. With your $19 monthly gift, you'll support life-saving research and treatment and help St. Jude find new cures and save children's lives. When St. Jude opened more than 50 years ago, my father made a promise that no family would ever receive a bill from St. Jude for anything, not for treatment or travel or housing or food. We believe all the family should worry about is helping their child live. Hope starts here. Hope's going to start with St. Jude. You are in the absolute best place in the world that you could be in. Discoveries made at St. Jude are shared freely so that more children can be saved around the world. That's why your donation is so important. So go online or call right now with your $19 monthly gift. Use your credit or debit card and you'll get this St. Jude t-shirt that you can proudly wear to show your support. I think it's something that you never think's going to be part of your life. It wasn't my child. I can't do anything about it, and that's hard. Just let it be me, not her. My father believed that we could change the fate of children stricken with cancer and other deadly diseases, but we have so much more work to do. And like my father said from the very beginning, I need your help. I can't do it alone. Please help me. We need your help now. So go online or call with your $19 monthly gift right now. Because hope starts right here. The UK ambassador to the US, Sir Kim Derrick, is resigning. Derek says